Coach, first of all, you know, obviously your impressions from, from week one of Penn State, what would you positive came out of it? Uh, I think the positive things are is, is I think it gave our kids a sense or a belief that if we go out and follow the game plan, um, execute, prepare, uh, like you're expected to, to do in this game, and you respect the game, uh, you can do some good things. And uh, there's a period of time there that we did some good things. There's always some foolish things, you know, that we always have a tendency as coaches to dwell on. But for a first game out, first staff time, you know, first time our staff's been together, first time with this team, first time being on the road, those type of things, um, we were encouraged by some things we've seen. Uh, hopefully one of these days, though, we'll expect more than just to score a touchdown or two, you know. I would hope someday that we get our program to where we expect to, to beat one of those teams. Uh, we, ex we, we expect to beat them. Uh, I'd just like to see us get the job done. The coaching cliche and coach talk is teams improve the most from weeks one to week two. What, what do you feel you need to improve on entering week two? Well, when I look back at the film, you know, the penalties that happen before and after the whistle are, are the big, big penalties that stick out. And, you know, calls are calls. Uh, you know, some are good and some are bad. But, uh, you know, you can't make excuses about it. We've got to get better at those type of things. I can handle an aggressive penalty. You know, but the ones before and after the whistle, those ones, those are the foolish penalties that we've got to eliminate. And we've got to just continue to really focus on as a team of preparing. You know, we, we started preparing on Sunday. You know, we started preparing on Monday. Today's Tuesday. Today's a work day. We need to go out and have a good practice. You know, we need to go out and simulate Butler as, as good as we can. So that way there's a confidence level when we shine the car on Thursday and get ready to you know, go out on Saturday and play. And we, we're not going to get Tuesday back. So we're either going to get better or worse today. And that will be the message to this football team is, is we need to go out today and get better. And I believe over, over time, if we take the approach that we get better every day, we'll have a chance to have a good football team here one of these days. Can you give us a scouting report on Butler? Butler's a very good football team. Coach Boris has done a great job. You know, he took over a program that was 0-11 five years ago and he's continually progressed last year they won 11 football games they got 17 guys back so you know they're a football team that's very dangerous they had 519 yards they were 7 of 15 on third down uh, against Albion they held them to 87 yards rushing 145 passing they're creative in the special teams game as far as schematics they're a very well coached football team they're going to be excited to come in here at Youngstown and play they know how to win. When you have a football team that's won 11 games, they know how to win. So, you know, it's a great challenge for us. I expect our team to rise up and, and play like they're capable of. But uh, Butler's a good football team and very well coached. Eric, obviously the level of competition, with all due respect, drops a little bit. Is this a scary game? You mentioned um, last week being on the other side of things, it's scary for you. I mean, I, I tell you this, I, you know, when you look at them on film, it, it, they're a good football team. Schematically, they do a lot of good things. They have the ability to run the ball with their quarterback. You know, he ran the ball for 61 yards last week. They got a receiver, Koopman, that had 108 yards. So, I mean, they're a good football team, and we're going to have our hands full. We need to come out and play. We need to have a home field advantage. This community, this valley, we need you. We need to fill this place up. When they got the ball on third down, we need to hear you. It needs to be loud. Uh, we need to get back to what the ice castle was, is supposed to be. Coach, can you touch on years ago when your first impressions of Stanball Stadium, maybe when you came as a fan, and now how this Saturday it will come full circle for you to actually be the head coach here in this stadium? It's, um, it's been interesting, you know. Uh, you know, I played here. I played in this stadium. We had a big win against Mooney here, and uh, this is a special place for me. Uh, it was, you know, when I was at Erston High School, it was an honor to come over here and make that walk and come over here and play. Um, this, is a, this is a beautiful stadium, and it's a great atmosphere, and the fans are great. The tailgate lots will be full. I mean, it's a, it's a great environment. I've been at some 1A programs where we did not have the environment like we have here at Youngstown. And I, I know at the end of the day, our, our community and our valley is going to come out and back us, and our job is, is we need to give them something to be excited about. Eric, can you talk about the excitement of the home opener, what it means to you? Well, you know, obviously it's, it's your first time at home. Uh, it's a little bit of a different environment. Um, something that's different that we do at home here is, is on Friday night, 
you know, your players don't stay in the hotel with you. So I've tried to monitor our itinerary as close as I can to an away trip. So still having all of your team functions, your team meetings, your FCA, your chapel, your dinner, and then also having a movie together, having a team meeting, a motivational video, video in the evening, a stretch, still collecting the phones so that way we don't have disruptive texts and stuff in the middle of the night uh, from people and uh, getting them back up on Sunday, bringing them over here, having a walkthrough and just continuing to try to dial these guys in because it's a six o'clock game. You know, high noon game, you get up in the morning, you know, put a little water on your face, go eat, go play. Now you have to deal with all Saturday afternoon, sitting around, keeping them from getting flat, keeping them in the game, but also at the same time, not being too tight. You know, we talked about the Penn State game is, is there's a, there's a period of time that I want you to get ready to start to peak. And it's not the night before the game. It's not on a bus ride over listening to ACDC and all this wild music and you're already fatigued before the game. And these are the little steps that I feel like our staff and myself, we have to do to continue to educate these guys on how to prepare and how to peak at the right time. And I, I hope we do that. Eric, uh, it's been almost a decade now since Tressel was here. He's one of the reasons why I used to fill this place up. You you still sense him I mean, and, and, and try to to reach the, the goals that he reached here? Is that, is that your thinking? No that? question. I mean, Coach Trussell set the standard here. And uh, it's a, obviously a very high standard. Coach Trussell's a great football coach. I had an opportunity to get to know him when he recruited me. And I learned some things from him in recruiting when I was 18 years old that I still use today here in this valley. So Jim Trussell had an impact on me at 18 years old in the profession that I've chose, which just happens to be the same one that he's, he's coaching. But he set, he set the table here, and that's very clear, and I embrace it. You know, uh, It's exciting to be a place you can win. The dynamics are a little bit different. We have conference play now. We're not an independent. So we play teams you know, that we have a conference that we belong to. We have longer road trips, but regardless, the expectations are still the same to get in the playoffs and win championships. And that's the way my staff and we think, and that's well, that's not going to change. Coach, oh, um, Butler has been very successful, as you pointed out, but at a, a different level of, of uh, FCS. What kind of uh, physicality or physical challenges, matchups, the physical matchup do you expect from them? Well, when I, you know, I, I watch them on special teams. You know, they got their starters playing on special teams, and their first guys down on uh, downfield. You know, making plays on kickoff on their kickoff team, for example. So that tells me that their starters have bought into and doing exactly what they ask them to do, and they have speed. They have great schemes, and they're well coached. So I don't think we're in any type of position to take anybody for granted. By no means do we uh, do we have more talent than Butler does. By no means. They are a good football team. They won 11 games last year. They're well coached. And if, if you want to put the film on, I can show it to you. I mean, uh, they're a good football team. And uh, we need to come out and be ready to play. Coach, how